Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is Proportional Reasoning with Coulomb's Law. And here's what we wish to learn today. How do you predict the effect of varying charge upon the value of the electric force? And how do you predict the effect of varying separation distance upon the electric force value? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed Coulomb's Law and how to use it to solve physics word problems. If you need a review, there's a link in the description to that video. Coulomb's law states that the electric force between any two charged objects is directly proportional to the product of the charges upon those objects and inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance. Written as a proportionality statement, it would look something like this, where Q represents the quantity of charge on either object A or object B and D represents the separation distance between these two charged objects. As shown on the diagram, it's measured from the center of one object to the center of the other object. The law states that as you increase the quantity of charge on either one of the objects, you would increase the force between them by the same factor by which you increase the charge. And if you were to increase the distance between the two objects, you would decrease the electric force between them by the square of the factor by which the distance was changed. So Coulomb's law has two parts. And the first part states that the electric force is directly proportional to the product of the charges. That is to say, if either of the charges is increased, the force would increase as well and increase by the same factor by which the charge was increased. If we were to put some specifics to this, we could say if QA were doubled, then the electric force would double as well. And if QA was tripled, then the electric force would triple as well. If QA were halved, the electric force would half as well. If both QA and QB were doubled, then the electric force would quadruple, be four times bigger. If QA were doubled and QB were tripled, then the electric force would be six times bigger. And finally, if QA was tripled while QB was halved, then the electric force would be three halves, or 1.5 times larger. When we use Coulomb's law in this way, we're using it as a guide to thinking about how an alteration in one of the variables, like QA or QB, would affect another variable, like the electric force. This table will help us to illustrate how to use an equation as a guide to thinking. If we look at rows A and B, we'll notice that it demonstrates that a doubling of the QA value will cause the F electrical value to double as well, from 5 newtons to 10 newtons. And row A and C show that if you double the QB value from 4 microcoulombs to 8 microcoulombs, that also causes the electric force to double from 5 newtons to 10 newtons. And rows A and D show that if both the QA value were doubled and the QB value were doubled, then the electric force value would quadruple from 5 newtons to 20 newtons. Rows A and E show that the quadrupling of QA causes the electric force to quadruple as well from 5 to 20 newtons. And rows A and F show that if that 2 microcoulomb QA value were halved to 1 microcoulomb, then the electric force value would half from 5 newtons to 2.5 newtons. And rows A and G show that if you were to triple the QA value from 2 microcoulombs to 6 microcoulombs, you would cause the electric force to triple as well from 5 newtons to 15 newtons. Finally, if we look at row A and, G, A and H, it shows that if you were to half the QA value, while doubling the QB value, then these two changes would cancel the effect up on one another, and there'd be no overall change in the value of F electrical. The second part of Coulomb's law states that the electric force is inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance. That is to say that if the distance were increased, the electric force would be decreased, and decreased by a factor that is the square of the factor by which the d is changed. We sometimes refer to this as the inverse square law because the f is inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance. Here's four illustrations of how it works. The first, if the d is doubled two times bigger, then the f gets smaller and becomes one-fourth of the original value. That is one divided by two squared. And if the d is tripled three times bigger, then the f becomes one-ninth of the original value. That is one divided by three squared. 
And if the D is quadrupled, four times bigger, the force would become 1 16th of its original value. And finally, if the D got smaller and were halved, then the force would get bigger and be four times the original value. That's 2 squared. Once more, we'll use a table of numerical values to illustrate the inverse squared law relationship. If we look at rows A and B, the distance doubled from 20 to 40 centimeters, while the force has become one-fourth of the original value. It was 16 newtons, and now it's 4 newtons. Rows A and C illustrate that if you take the distance and triple it from 20 to 60, you'll cause the force to become one-ninth the original value. It was 16, and now it's about 1.8. If you look at rows A and D, they show that if you quadruple the distance, it causes the force to go down by a factor of 4 squared. It was 16 newtons, and now it's 1 16th of that. It's 1 newtons. And if you look at row A and E, it shows that if you actually make the distance half of the original value, it was 20 and now it's 10. You'll make the force 4 times bigger. That is, you take the halving factor, the 2, and you square it, and you cause, the 16, you cause the 16 newtons to become 64 newtons. And row A and F show that if you were to make the distance one-fourth the original value, it was 20 and now it's 5 centimeters, then you make the force 16 times larger. It was 16 newtons, and it's now 256 newtons. Now it's your turn to practice, so pause the video and give these seven questions some time. When you're ready to learn what the answers are and their explanations, go ahead and press play. Pause now. Okay, question A has an answer of 72 units, because if you triple a charge, you will triple the force. So 24 times 3 is 72. And answer to B is 12 units, because if you half a charge, you will half the force, and the 24 becomes one half of what it was. It's 12 units. If you were to double both of the charges, then you would quadruple the force. So the answer to C is 24 times 4, 96 units. And in D, the answer is 144, because if you were to double one charge and triple the other, you'd have to start with 24, double it, and then triple it. That is times 2 and times 3, and you get 144 units. Questions E, F, and G have to do with the force distance relationship. The answer to E is 6 units, because if you were to double distance, you would make the force 1 fourth of the original value. You take 24 and divide by 2 squared. And in F, you're making the distance smaller, so you make the force bigger. If the distance becomes 1 half of its original value, the force becomes 2 squared times its original value. 24 times 2 squared is 96. And the answer to G is roughly 2.67. What you must do is take the 24 and divide by 3 squared. You get 2.66666 repeating. That's close enough to 2.67. At this time, I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources from our website. You'll find links to each one of them in the description section. You'll find that any one of these resources could go a long ways towards making the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.